Okay, we're here in lesson zero for begin. And uh, in this lesson, now that we have our XGen kind of added onto our mesh here, I want to talk a little bit about the kind of general interface. Now, there's a lot here, uh, so we can't cover it all right now. And it really will make more sense to cover, you know, the important tools as we use them. But I still want to make sure you have a rough idea of what's actually going on here, what's in these different tabs, as well as uh, what's going on here between these little kind of yellow hairs versus these thick little tubes. So um, for starters, you notice things are looking a little cramped here, and that's because uh, for the sake of recording these videos, I'm kind of shrunk down to a smaller resolution. When you're at uh, you know, nice uh, full-size res, uh, this is actually not cramped at all. So by default, we're in this grooming tab. Uh, it kind of puts us there because that's, that is the default for um, working with groomable splines. However, let's talk just kind of starting over here what these do. So you'll notice this one's called primitives. Now, XGen is an arbitrary primitive creation or generation system. It's basically creating instance little tubes or whatever else we tell it to create across an entire surface. When we're dealing with groomable splines, it does create these little kind of weird tube shapes across the entire surface. So to control these actual tubes, not necessarily their direction or anything like that, that's going to be done in this tab. We can control how often they appear through things like density, uh, whether they're random or not. Uh, we can also control whether they're appearing as splines, cards, spheres. We saw some of those attributes earlier. We can control uh, things like their overall width. We can also control how many CVs they have. We come down over here, we can control things like taper. You'll notice several of these have expressions loaded in them. If you see an expression, that's typically because that function is being handled by the grooming tab. You can see here, that's what's uh, controlling it right there. Okay, uh, I'm not 100% sure why it defaults. You can see that's my desktop right over there. Uh, actually goes to my users. Um, uh, there are aspects to XGen that are stored inside of your um, uh, you know, program files, I guess, which you can call your own documents. Not sure why it does that versus projects. I'm sure it's a working issue. Uh, or functional issue, whatever. Uh, we also can, uh, you know, add in, you know, things like displacements, bumps, and things like that that'll offset the primitives in here. So typically, this tab is reserved for controlling the actual look and control of just the primitives themselves. The preview and output tab is kind of what it sounds like. It controls preview and output. Preview is in what we see inside of our viewport. Output as in what comes out of the final output, our render. So you'll see here's our preview settings where we can actually control how many we have in the viewport, the percentage of them that are showing up, and you know other things we might want to see, like uh, maybe we want to see individual vertices, face IDs, uh, mostly you know debugging type things. Uh, and here you could see that the uh, output is set to mental ray. We'll talk more about this stuff when we actually get to it later on. Uh, typically, you won't have to dig too deep in here for quite a while. Modifiers is not something we can work with at all right now. Uh, modifiers are going to be kind of like large sweeping um, changes that we can add to every single hair at once. Uh, grooming, this is where we're going to spend most of our time in, uh, is going to be for actually changing these little yellow splines. Those are kind of the guide splines. They're going to control where these tubes appear. And you can see there's all kinds of brushes here. We have mirroring tools as well as the settings for the actual splines. Okay, utilities over here, we're not really going to be working with either. We'll see, I, actually, I don't think I have any plans to use any of these. These are a bit more useful when we're actually working with individual splines. So you can see we can actually copy curves. We can turn dynamic guides into regular guides. Uh, we can use joints to actually groom our guides. Um, most of this doesn't really, again, work for fur because the fur uses these grooming tools in order to control these. If I do end up doing a tutorial on using the splines, these then become a bit more useful. And lastly, we can add our own expressions in here. Again, this is something that's much more advanced. Uh, would be used a lot more if you're actually using this for like set dressing, uh, you know, generating things across a surface. Uh, we won't be using this in this uh, set of tutorials. So up over here, uh, we have some you know, more commonly used buttons. We're actually not going to be using all of these, but these first two will be our most common. Uh, this is for updating the XGen preview, and this is for clearing it. When I clear it, notice all that gets left are our little guide splines. If I click this button with the eye here, notice that goes now to a check mark instead of a little exclamation. 
and it's made a preview. When I zoom out, you'll notice it only previewed what was visible. If I click it again, you can see again, only previewing what's visible. Uh, this is the way XGen can kind of stay a little bit faster by uh, not always updating the actual primitives. It's just kind of showing us the guides. You can set this over here to update automatically. So anytime there's a change, it will update. We will do this later. I don't recommend that right now. In fact, for the most part, as we're going to be working with uh, combing our fur over here, we're actually going to keep the preview of those primitives off. In fact, we can go quite a while without even needing to look at them. Uh, then over here, a lot of these, again, we don't need right now. This is to create new XGen descriptions. Um, this is to actually append uh, XGen to specific faces. This is for adding or moving guides. Again, something that does not work with um, uh, just these uh, groomable splines. Uh, we can hide certain guides, lock guides, mirror guides. Again, all stuff that works with uh, this spline-based version. So, um, and here we can also you know, select them, hide them, etc. cetera. Uh, there's really cool kind of systems in here for splines where we have just specific ones visible. Uh, for us, the visibility of these is going to be uh, kind of controlled down here. We're going to skip past the brushes for now. We'll talk about those in the next lesson. So when I come down here, this is where I can turn the visibility on and off for these guides. I can also control their density. Now, this is something you have to be very careful with. Uh, this is not set up, in my opinion, very user-friendly. Let's say I have a density of 30 and I begin combing. Again, we'll discuss these tools in just a little bit. And I go ahead and comb some of my fur here. Just using my mouse now, we'll use the Wacom tablet a little bit later. There we go. I went ahead and did all that. And then I decide maybe I want a little bit more detail in here. So I come down here and begin increasing my density and all my work is gone. And guess what? The undo button doesn't work. That's because the default sampling is set to linear. We need to give it a way to actually interpolate. You can use nearest method or the interpolation method. So now if I go ahead and comb this and change the resolution, notice it's keeping it. Now, this is not being stored in any kind of file. It's not associated with a texture, so you have to be careful. This is not something you just kind of play with willy-nilly. If I bring this down pretty low, notice I have very few hairs now. It's not kind of like ZBrush that stores all of the kind of level information. When I go up now, it's now just trying to reinterpolate according to those curves that we just had at that lower res, so you can see it kind of get this weird patchy effect. So be very careful. Try to only work moving upwards and don't start too low. So we just start with, let's say, 20 and spend a long time combing. As soon as we kind of move back up, we got to recomb some of these areas because you can see we kind of have these little mechanical changes in here that are kind of un, um, very unorganic. So again, be careful with this. I'm usually always going to use the interpolation method over here. And I typically start at about 100. Okay, we can also change the color of them over here. Um, I don't like this bright yellow, it just kills my eyes. Uh, so typically I'll go ahead and you know, bring these down, maybe make slightly darker roots. And then sometimes I play with different colors over here, usually something that contrasts pretty well against the mesh. And I might change that mesh color as well. I like using just black and white. Uh, of course, that's contrasting against this mesh right now though. So we can also display lines or cards. I prefer displaying cards just because it's easier for me to tell what direction things are running in. Uh, my eyes just get a little kind of wigged out with lines. It's hard for me to kind of see where everything is going. Everything will look fine to me. While in cards, I can clearly see there's some pretty big directional issues in here. Okay. I can also control the overall length as well as the width. And the cool thing about using the card display is we can actually preview that width. Uh, if we were in line mode, you actually can't see that. Uh, this is, here is TPU. This is Texels, uh, or rather the Texel resolution. Uh, and that's only if you're exporting this groom data. Uh, normally, uh, you don't really need to pay any attention to that. OK, so that's kind of a quick overview of the XGen tools. So in the next lesson, uh, we're going to go ahead and start talking about these brushes, um, as well as density and things like that. Uh, so. Let's go ahead and do that in our next lesson.